you very much. <laughs> Lovely. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. But you know, we're so short of time, aren't we? Um, beautiful. And, and, you know, this is such a difficult piece. I'm always saying, you know, if anybody's got to find an old arpeggione in their loft, do let me know, because it's got more strings than a cello, and it would make life a lot easier. <laughs> but it is incredibly difficult. And it's incredibly difficult because it's so delicate and, and refined, isn't it, all the time? And there's so many things you would like more strings for. <clears throat> and you play it beautifully. And, and really what I want to, to talk about a little bit is how to refine it in a certain way and also to bring out even more the kind of different characters. Because I said, you know, after the Brahms, this would be something lighter. But actually, it's in a way, it's tragically sad, isn't it? And yes, it's got its moments, you know, of lightness. But actually, this A minor this sadness is so beautiful. And I think that's what touches everybody so much when they listen, is that kind of darkness. And uh, it's a mixture of darkness with, with a light quality. So it's not the darkness we get in that heavy, dark Brahms thing. It's the darkness in, in the light. And I think, you know, to find something, a colour, which is even more uh, expressive, I would like to, to help you to find something that's in that way. Um, it's a mixture of, you know, how you move here and a little bit of how you move here, of course, like all sound production, you know. And just the fact that you need to breathe in lots, perhaps more than you are. So that there's this feeling in. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I think it needs it because the danger is that if you don't have the breathing, you don't have the singing. You know, it just becomes one long thing. So it needs to be refined in that way. And even just the way you finish a note has to be so delicate, both hands. And then continuing. And the way the harmony works for these extra... I mean, you're so musical, you can feel those things. But maybe we need to, to send it out a little more clearly to them. Would you start once more? Maybe just a little bar or two. to interrupt you know you know my feeling is that this is just the beginning of a long journey and maybe it's just too much you know you're telling the whole story straight away and I think it would be more subtle if you would just even you know um, the small indications enough already because I think later there's going to be a lot more and also you can just hold the atmosphere a bit more if you're starting to push it the atmosphere is going to change very quickly so I think despite the difficulties I think you should hang on a little bit longer can you come directly where the cello starts <laughs> Okay, good. That was much nicer. And I think also the question of how you breathe and how you move from one phrase to the other is also very important because it's no good to stop. You know, if you stop, that's 
you know, we're losing the pulse, the general movement we have to lose. You have to stop, breathe and continue in a way at the same time. <sighs> Yeah. Maybe you have to breathe more than the cello has to breathe. You have to breathe. <sighs> but anyway, it's a sort of quick breath to continue. So I'm... Um, and also I'd like you to follow the line. You know, going up, but not too much up. But when you come down, you should definitely fall. Because it's, you know, like the wind has gone and we're just dropping a little bit. And trying again. Again. And that's where we started. In a sense, we're just settling back. Now this is something new. I mean, it's new rhythmically, it's a new energy, it's a new everything. So I think close the last section and then come on. One more time. <coughs> Excuse me. Very good. That was much better. You know, um, you know, I don't think this is the start of the next. It's the end of the last one. Now, now what we have to always consider is sound. You know, music is sound. All you're doing is listening to sound. Sound is vibration and we have to feel vibration. And when we hear and we feel the vibration, we react emotionally. So if the, mu if the music is like this, we get vibration like this, and we do this, and we feel this. And when it's, we think, oh. And I don't know, there is no scientist in the world, brain surgeon or anybody else, who I've ever spoken to has ever been able to explain why we have such a powerful reaction to vibration, because all it is is vibration. But the vibration that we create with music has a direct and very powerful emotional effect. And it's something that our bodies, including our ears, receive. And when we receive the vibration, we react in extraordinary ways. And so, when you play with this kind of vibration, if you play with the same kind of vibration, we will have the same emotional reaction. It doesn't matter about the notes, it doesn't matter about the rhythm, it doesn't matter about the harmony. It really doesn't make a difference until the sound and the vibration changes. And at that point, we feel something different. So when you finish... Now when you start some a new emotion, we have to technically do something, don't we, that changes the kind of vibration that we're producing. So this has to be something nearer the bridge, a little bit more concise, not so like this. And the moment you do it, even if you don't change anything else, we will suddenly feel the music change. And that's what he wants. So if you play him... Can you just make that change very quickly?
Excellent. Exactly. You see, immediately in, we have an immediate emotional, and actually you don't have to do very much, do you? It's just enough. Now, I want to show you something else. You know, you finish beautifully after barring, 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 stirring up, stirring up, and then you finish lightly. Now, when we look at the map of the music, what we see are shapes and designs. And what we're seeing by this is that he actually quite likes this as a kind of formula in the music. That the first phrase finishes here. Then we have something new and that finishes. And now we had another one. It went a bit further and it finished. And that seems to be the pattern of the music. It's also a kind of emotional pattern, isn't it? Because it explains that he's not trying to have a long-term general you know, plan. It's just beautiful ideas that kind of complete and then another one. So once we have that knowledge of that this is how the music is going to work, you know, we have to attend to it carefully and be aware of it because, you know, the more you understand the structure, the better you play. Okay, so then that finishes there. What happens? Uh, over to you. Okay, so that's the next station, isn't it? And it starts. You know, it's suddenly operatic or something like that. Where did that come from? <laughs> Big surprise. And you must be like that. You must surprise us. Trills. Something like a tambourine rattling. You know, something fantastic. You know, it's much more than just a single note, isn't it? And now little things, decorations. <laughs> you know, it's full of charm now. So you were smiling when you changed the sound before, and you were right, because the music is going to smile much more. And I think just one more time from a this feeling, yes, bravora, brilliant. Dun. Yes, good. Don't forget the small details because, you know, while you're having this feeling, there's also little bits of punctuation which allow us to feel, you know, the music is not just blatant. It's something which has refinement in it. So we need to point those things out because those are emotional points within the music. Can you go from, from here? Okay, good. Make sure that you know, remember the sound. Whatever you do, it's only the sound that makes the big difference. So if you play, you don't give us any excitement or any life now. An octave is a very important interval, isn't it? It's powerfully jumping. You know, it's all dancing, but the kind of sound you make, that will carry everything else. You know, the sound is the carrier of the message. Think of the sound and then you will find the message, you know? Can you, directly from here, think about the... Yeah, daddy.
Okay, sorry, that's much better now. Um, when you have this darkness, which leads to the lightness, you must show that much more clearly. Or can we go be just before that? Uh, oh, let's go once more, yes, why not? See, now we have come back again, haven't we? We've closed in a way. And after all the excitement and all this, it changes very quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. In one moment, it suddenly becomes tragic again. And the sound needs to become tragic too. Yes, everything. So that we, you know, we recognize where the music came from, how it was so beautiful and tragic at the beginning. And it's like a memory, isn't it? We're thinking back, oh yes, that was so beautiful then. So when you, again, when you move with the music, sometimes in a moment you have to reflect, you know, a complete change of emotion. Suddenly very tragic. And that's what he writes, isn't he? It's very clear that, that he's not taking us slowly from one place to another. It can happen just in a moment. In the same way that, you know, in Mozart, you can hear one note and it breaks your heart. Just that moment. And in the way he does it, of course, because he was another genius. You know, he can change your mood in a moment. And there is nothing more incredible and the power of music to change your mood. It can change you as a person, it can change your mood in an instant. I don't think there's anything else that can do that in the same way. Thank you very much indeed. Well done.